Welcome! In this presentation, we are going to talk about how to prepare for the Elastic Certified Observability Engineer exam. Elastic currently has three certification exams. The Engineer exam focuses on Elastic Search. The Analyst exam has a heavy focus on using Kibana to answer questions, build dashboards, machine learning, all those wonderful things you can do with Kibana. Today, we are going to talk about the Observability exam. We are going to go through the process of how to take the Observability Engineer exam, and we will see what it looks like. Let's get started. I have an environment spun up, and I'm actually going to complete some tasks in a real exam environment. Our exams at Elastic are performance-based. They are hands-on. What does that mean? That means the questions I give you in the exam, you're going to have to solve them on a live Elastic deployment. So, for example, the observability exam, it's actually kind of a fun environment. There's a web application and it's got all these moving parts. There's like 10 or 15 servers that make this application run. So it's not a multiple choice question exam. It's really like 10 to 15 questions that you solve in a three hour time frame. So it's a small number of tasks, but some tasks can take maybe 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Some tasks, if you know what you're doing, take maybe two or three minutes to complete. So it all just depends. But all of our exams are like this. So this is a typical elastic exam. If you've been certified before or have taken one of our other exams, you'll be very familiar with the exam environment. So what's on the exam? This is a critical part of preparing for the exam. If you want to be fully prepared for the observability engineer exam, then you should be able to perform all of the exam objectives. These objectives are on the training certification website. Elastic.co slash training slash certification shows the exams we offer. If you click on Get Certified here for the Observability Engineer exam, it will take you to a page where you can buy the exam notice. You can add it to your shopping cart if you need to purchase the exam notice right here. And if I scroll down, you will see every action that you need to know to take the exam. To ensure you are prepared in the best way possible to pass the exam, we have a course called Elastic Observability Engineer. It exactly matches the exam content and covers these topics. We have options for virtual class sessions as well as on-demand training. We highly recommend that you complete the training before attempting the exam. You do not have to attend the training to attempt the exam, but it will help prepare you for the exam and you'll definitely see the similarities between the two. So that's what's on the exam. Where do I take the exam? The exam is taken online. If you want to take an exam, you need a computer, a laptop, or something with a camera on it. You need a clean desk, a quiet room and three hours of your day to take this test. But just keep in mind that someone's watching you take the exam. We have live proctors. This is not an elastic employee. We have a vendor that we use that watches our candidates attempt the exam and they also record your screen. We do that to ensure the integrity of the exam. So that's why a camera is needed. You need a good internet connection wherever you are because it's all taken online. You don't have to install anything on your computer. You just need a Chrome web browser. It doesn't matter if it's on Windows or a Mac or Linux, none of that should have anything to do with anything because the whole exam is delivered in the cloud. You open up a tab inside Google Chrome and you stay inside that tab the entire time. You can't leave the tab at all or the proctor will stop your exam. If you fail the exam, you have to come back and purchase another attempt. Your other option is the training subscription. If you have a training subscription that's either the standard or the professional, you actually get two exam attempts in the standard subscription, and you get four exam attempts in the professional, and you can use those however you want. After you purchase the exam, you're going to get an email from us. If you have a training subscription, you just log in and enroll in the exam. You should get an email within a minute or two. And if you don't get the email, check your spam folder. If you're even remotely serious about taking the exam, I recommend you read this entire FAQ page, every single question, every single answer. There's great information, some of it's very high-level details, just to kind of put you at ease. And some of it is very important details like what version the exam is on. This changes as elastic updates and changes. What does the exam environment look like? I'm going to show you now. This is a screenshot, but I have the actual exam right here. This is what you see now. Notice I'm inside a tab inside my Chrome browser. This is the exam. This is the welcome page. There are a couple of things I want to say about this. One, you will see this page. 
When you go to take the exam through PSI, let's say, 9 o'clock am, you're going to show up about 15 minutes before then, and someone's going to need to look at your driver's license. You're going to have to hold it up to the camera, and they're going to have to see that your desk is completely cleaned off. During the three hours you get a 10-minute restroom break if you need that. But the clock doesn't stop when you do that. So those are some details that you'll go through with the proctor. When you see this screen right here, this button is going to say Start Assessment. Now I already clicked Start because I had to set something up on here. The three hours starts right now, so not when you click Start Assessment. When you see this window, that's when your clock starts. There's no timer, so make a note. From there you have plenty of time. The second thing I want to point out is that this is not the exam. This page, what you're looking at, is just the instructions. And the first thing you should do is read all the comments below. Please do that. I highly recommend you go through these. Notice this exam consists of 9 tasks. There's different versions of the exam. You might get 10 tasks or 12 tasks or something like that, but this particular variant has 9 tasks. The tasks are not right or wrong, so you can get partial credit. It's very important that you at least attempt every single task. If you only know how to do half of a task, do it anyway, you'll get half the points. If you skip a task entirely, you're putting yourself in a very dangerous position in terms of how to pass. You don't have to get 100% to pass. We don't advertise the passing score because it can vary depending on which version of the exam you have. But it's definitely worth your time to make sure you at least try every task. It talks about how the elastic beats are downloaded onto all these different servers. It looks like I have Logstash available even though it's not required for the exam. Here are some important usernames and passwords. It looks like Elasticsearch uses HTTPS and there's a certificate provided on all the servers. Looks like I can log into Kibana if I need to. Looks like I need to start the free trial. I can do that right now. So let's click on that and log in. The timer starts when this window appears in front of you and then at the bottom of the screen. This is very important. By the way, this is a Linux host. To copy and paste, you use Ctrl C, Ctrl V, not your Mac command button. Notice it says there's a web application called Hipster Shop that's running on localhost 8080. This is an online store. Don't waste your time buying things, you can add things to your cart. And check out in the background of this instant right there. Right here is a load generator that's got a bunch of traffic, so the environment starts up and all these servers have all these programs running on them. And then this load generator is simulating web traffic. But it's helpful because when you go to Kibana, you're going to see things happening. If I go to Discover, for example, there's a lot of documents being indexed, so that's all happening. But there's a lot of things that are not set up on here. So this environment is not really observable yet. It's partially observable. By the way, notice on the desktop here, if you accidentally close the exam instructions, there's a shortcut right here. If you want to use the Elastic documentation, the entire Elastic.co website is at your disposal. So all the documentation for all our stack is right here. You have to do it inside the tab here. Notice there's a shortcut to a terminal. There's also a shortcut to a terminal up here on the taskbar. Here's what the exam looks like. When you click on Start Assessment here, you can see there's 9 tasks. You can go to any task in any order. You can perform them or complete them in any way you want. Some of them you have to type an answer into. Most of them, you do not type an answer into it, you just go do it. When you're done with a task, you hit Save Progress. Continue. You can hit Skip. Honestly, there really isn't much difference between them unless there's an answer. If you have to type in an answer, like if the answer to this is 12 and which transaction has the largest impact and it's Git card or something like that, then you do have to type something in there or hit skip, one or the other. You can always come back. You're never stuck on a question or you can do them in any order and each question is independent of the other. You should never have to complete one task to finish another one. They're all separate and hopefully completely independent. You could have spent a lot of time trying to figure out that SSL certificate. Don't panic. Don't get yourself all stressed about something like that. Once you get it working, you're going to find out that, oh, now I need that username and password and certificate maybe three more times on the exam. 
and so things will go more smoothly once you get comfortable with the environment. So try not to get wrapped up in the stress of the exam. Just do what you can do. What is the average number of requests per minute being handled by the shipping service process? Where would you go to answer that question? Think about it. So they're asking me a question about average number of requests. Well, if you're familiar with elastic observability, you're going to go to Kibana and go to the APM app. And the APM app is going to show you all the services being collected. Now, it looks like there's eight different services are being monitored by APM. I didn't set this up, so it must have been set up already. By the way, make sure you know how to set up an APM server, because that's one of the exam objectives. It looks like here, I didn't have to do it, but you should still be able to answer questions. I'm looking at the shipping service process, so let's click on shipping service, and I got all kinds of wonderful details about this Python application. The average number of requests per minute. You can look around. The fact that you found this page is 90% of the question. I knew where to go. It's 25.0 requests per minute. That's a very exact number. I'll just type it in the box. It looks like it's 25.0. Does that make sense? Which transaction of the shipping service has the largest impact? Well, that sounds like an APM question as well. If I scroll down to the bottom of the APM app page for this, you'll see that the get quote transaction is handling 21.5 transactions per minute. It has all the impact, according to this, so I'm just going to copy. I don't want to type that because I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm just going to right-click and copy. And I'm going to paste it right here. And then I would then click Save Progress and Continue. It would take me to the next task. So when you get to the end of the exam, when you get to the assessment review, here, it says that I skipped number two. Well, that means I probably better go back and make sure that I typed an answer in there. But because it's an instruction, it doesn't matter. This environment doesn't know if I did the task or not. It just knows if I read it. When you're done with the exam, you're going to hit complete assessment, and then you can talk to the proctor. By the way, at any time, you can talk to the proctor through chat. When you're done with the exam, you hit complete assessment and the proctor kind of takes over from there. There's not a lot to be said at the end of the exam. If you do get close to the end, if you need all three hours, the proctor is going to give you a warning. You're responsible for the three hours, but they will come in and tell you you're done when you're done with the exam. If your time runs out, the proctor will just stop at wherever it is. That's it, go take a break, have a coffee or whatever you do to relax. You do not get your exam result right away. We have to grade these. That takes some time. We like to review every exam. So that's the exam environment. Make sure you're comfortable with that. Is there a practice exam available? Yes, for training subscribers. If you're a training subscriber, log into your training portal and you'll see that there's a practice exam for the observability engineer. The practice exam doesn't have the same environment. It doesn't have this look and feel. Weed is the training environment, so they'll use Strigo for those of you that are familiar with our training. Can I have a drink of water during the exam? Yes, but it has to be in a clear glass. Your desk has to be clean. You cannot have paper or pencil. You can't have your phone. You can't have a picture of your cat. All that stuff's got to go. And you have to be able to pick up your laptop and turn it around. Because the proctor needs to see all 360 degrees of your space. If you want to use an external monitor, you absolutely can. But that external monitor has to have a camera on it because you'll have to close your laptop and you'll have to pick up your monitor and move that around the room if that's how you want to do that. The proctor can only see one screen at a time and you're only allowed one screen if you're taking the exam. If half the time you're looking at the ceiling, the proctor is going to stop the exam. You have to keep your eyes on your computer because they don't know what you're looking at. If your dog comes in the room and starts to bark, they're going to pause the exam because they don't want any background noise. If you take the exam at an office, you have got to find a quiet room. Make sure there's nobody around. Find a nice quiet place. How long is my certification good for? Your certification is good for two years from the day you pass it. If you pass any other exam of ours, we add two years to that. So if you are an active participant in the Elastic Certification programs, we will constantly be adding two years to your previous certifications, as long as you're actively pursuing any of the other certifications. We have three exams total. You'll get an email telling you whether you passed or failed the exam. If you fail the exam, we really want you to try again. If you need to take the exam again, you do have to purchase it again and reach out to us after you purchase it, 
because we have to set it up. If you have a training subscription and you have to take the exam a second time, same deal. You have to reach out to us. Send an email to certification at elastic.co. If you have any questions, please send an email to certification at elastic.co and visit the certification FAQ page. Best of luck to everybody. Thank you.